we're starting to get more into what's going on with Tom Brady, right? Starting to get to what's going on with Tom Brady. Uh, there was an interview with Giselle who used those key trigger words that most every guy has heard from their wife, especially those of us who work and love and live their work. Oh, you got to be more present at home. Did you guys see that? Giselle said you got to be more present. That's like cut out of the wife manual guy in 40s, mid 40s. Uh, got to be more present at home. It's a hard thing. And it's a frustrating thing to the rest of us because, you know, you get that do not disturb on the phone. You're like, come on, man. Like, just, I can't get a hold of you. He was on his Let's Go podcast. He said this about how he felt physically coming off of week one. There's a huge level of commitment for your body physically at an older age because it requires so much more care. Now, it requires care when you're younger, too. But at the same time, there's no margin of error when you're 45. You know, you take hits and you feel every hit. When you're younger, you have your body's a lot different. And when you're 45, your body changes a lot. So what am I dealing with now? I woke up today going, holy sh**. That was a, you know, there was a few hits. And, and uh, you know, you look at your arm and you got bruises, you got cuts, and you got, you know, the way it is. And you go, okay, how much longer do I, I want to make this commitment? And I obviously made the commitment for this year and everything's going to be, you know, like always continue to evaluate, you know, all these different aspects of playing. Tom Brady said this about the sacrifices he's made. In 23 years. You know, I haven't had a Thanksgiving in 23 years. I haven't celebrated birthdays with people that I care about that are, you know, born from August to late January. And, you know, I'm not able to be at funerals and I'm not able to be at weddings. And I think there comes a point in your life where you say, you know what? I've had my fill. It's enough. And time to go on to move into other parts of life. So what what you're seeing is the... He spent a legit amount of time, a legitimate amount of time thinking about that, ruminating over it. And in the off season, you know, right after the season, he was like, I'm done. The, the, the other side to it is there will be weddings. There will be funerals. There will be birthdays. What there is not once you walk away is having eye contact with 10 other dudes who you're leading down the field offensively being the focal point of, 80, 90,000 people in a building and being able to silence the road crowd and light up the home crowd, having an entire team depend upon you, be the leader of a group of men. That, those are things, that does not happen in the rest of your life. And I think Brady knows that. Um, but I, I, I think you're beginning to see exactly what is the pull on Brady. No question this will be his last year. He can say I'm going to evaluate it. But last year was a, you know, I probably shouldn't be doing this. Then he wakes up today and he's like, God, why am I doing this? But you are committed. And then you hear Giselle saying he needs to be more present. Well, what else would he be doing? Sure, he has his business interests. But if you just cut out that football thing, he would be a lot more present at home. It's going to be really hard for Brady to win this year. And there's no question that the greed of winning, that the the facade of how they won their last championship, and I say facade because the truth is they had to go on the road three consecutive games. They needed a little bit of help, not just from the defense, but from the teams that they took on. All those things, they needed those things to get to the Super Bowl where ultimately they played a team that was by the way, completely depleted. Remember, they, they beat the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs were missing four offensive linemen. Now, Rob Parker is going to join us in 20 minutes. He calls Tom Brady the lo- the luckiest of all time. And there is, a, there is an amount of luck it takes for anybody to be successful. My point has always been like, dude, you've been to 10 Super Bowls, you win seven of them. At some point, nobody is that lucky. There is an absolute skill to it. But the point is that it's a little bit of a facade when you're like, you convince yourself... It's this easy. You show up one year, you win a Super Bowl, we'll get right back. Oh, yeah, it's not that easy. So this year is going to be interesting where when he talks about commitment, you do need to be completely mentally and physically committed to the team in order to make it work. And it's not just him. It's all the other guys. It's the other 52 
You know, they, they all have to have that same level of commitment. The only teams that win are teams that have one goal. Right? When you have multiple goals, hey, I got to get this many catches. Hey, I got to get this many touches. Hey, I got to get this, this level of award. When, when it, there's a goal outside of winning or when there's something pulling you in a different direction, that's when it, it, gets, it gets really hard. I do think this is a very humanizing thing for Brady where he's looking at it and going, man, I haven't. My, my, my late father, uh, God rest his soul, like his, my brother's birthday is March 3rd. So March used to be not only it was always college basketball season. My dad was a college basketball coach. And it was also, you know, you'd, when your season was done back then, you get in the road and get in the road and start recruiting. So he didn't make my brother's birthday until uh, probably 86 or 87, right? My, my brother was born in 1972. You do the math. <laughs> he was literally gone almost every year. And, just, and if he was there, he wasn't there. This is even before the days of the cell phone. It's just hard. And at some point, you do look around and you go like, you know, I got more money than anybody. And he's got more money that's coming in. I, I hate to tell Tom Brady this, I'm, you know. I'm not sure he saw the details to the Fox deal. Sure, I'm sure he's flying a PJ private jet in order to get to his games on Friday for a game on Sunday. But it's not like you can go like, hey, you know, I can't make it this Sunday for, you know, pick a game. And it's going to be Fox. It'll be an NFC game. I can't make it for the Cowboys-Rams. I got this wedding. I haven't made a wedding, and like that, that just doesn't happen. It's not like it's not the way it works. I, I could be wrong. Maybe it works differently for Brady, and maybe that's a, he's got once a year he can just take a weekend off. It's by the way why Eli and Peyton Manning aren't doing it every week. We want to have lives. We want to have lives. But Brady's wife saying she wants to be more present. Brady's saying, "Hey, here's all these things I've sacrificed in the past, but and man, I'm taking a beating." This sounds like a dude who's only here to try and win a championship. Not, and, and I'm sure he loves leading guys. I'm, he probably loves leading that locker room. But when you start to question, what am I doing here? You lose a couple of games and it gets l- louder. It gets worse. It gets interesting. You know, your pull shouldn't be Hey, the NFC's down. We're pretty good. Let's try and win this thing one more time. It should be, I love it, and if we happen to win it while I'm doing it, all the better. But that's not what he said.